Greetings, Ed Budd here, and I'm back with a new episode of The Running News. Welcome to the show that aims to bring you the top running news of the week, direct to your mobile, your TV, or your laptop, or your iPad, or you get the picture. Let's get stuck into this week's running news. But first, do please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when new videos are launched. And smash that like button for me. I most appreciate it. First story today involves ASICs and the drop of a brand new running shoe it came a bit out of the blue. I keep rhyming things at the moment. Why is that? So out of the blue, ASICs have announced a brand new road running shoe, the Road Blast. It reminds me of a game back in the mid 80s, I think it was, released by maybe US Gold, I think it could have been, for the Sinclair Spectrum computer. I remember very distinctly trying to convince my mum to buy it for me when I was in Hamleys at one point. Road Blasters, yeah, I remember that, it was a good game. Hopefully ASICs have channeled the greatness of Road Blasters into this new offering. It was quietly unveiled in certain regions of the world. We don't seem to have it in the UK right now because, you know, we, we're just wearing running shoes from the 1980s. I got an email from somebody that suggested that those Reebok Energy 2 running shoes that I've got were from the 80s. And I said, OK, well, they're, tell you what, they're so comfortable for £29. They're some of the most comfortable running shoes that I've got. So I'm prepared to take the heat on that one. There's certainly some interesting features, though, in the Road Blast takes a lot of the technical features and functions from the Nova Blast. You could say that the Road Blast and the Nova Blast are cousins, perhaps. There's a gender-specific knit pattern to the upper, so between men and women, they've adjusted the knit ever so slightly. They've got that same bouncy energy returning foam that you get in the Nova Blast. Certainly an interesting move from ASICs. They've got a whole clutch of different shoes out at the moment. It's quite hard sometimes to actually decipher the differences between some of those shoes. You've got the Evo Ride here, which is quite a weight-limited version of the Glide Ride. They've reduced some of the flight foam and the upper's slightly lighter than in the Glide Ride. But aside from that, there's few differences really. It seems similar, this Road Blast, to the Nova Blast, a shoe that I'm very interested in and I can see a lot of you viewers really love that shoe as well. So many comments about how much joy that shoe has brought you guys recently. There's a less angular look to the Road Blast, certainly somewhat more subtle. You haven't got those right angles along the foam, but certainly the outsole seems almost the same as the Nova Blast. Perhaps we could do a viewer spot the difference competition and see if anybody can figure out what the differences are. I think there's also an Edo eco-friendly version of that shoe coming out very soon. This one seems to retail for about $90, so it could be that it's a slightly cheaper, slightly weight-relieved upper version of the Nova Blast. But there's very few details out at the moment. I couldn't even find a drop in terms of heel to toe or weight either, so we're gonna have to wait it out for more information on this one. Story number two revolves around personal protection equipment and running shoe manufacturers assisting in delivering that. So we've all seen Adidas's Adidas and started talking like Brad Hall. We've all seen Adidas's 4D midsole printing technology, but it looks as if they've turned that to start producing some shielding equipment for some of those frontline workers, those true legends and heroes that have been working tirelessly to try and help us and control the spread of that virus. They've been using that 3D printing technology to create some shields to protect some of those workers. I think that's in conjunction with their partner who are called Carbon. Adidas have said they've created over 200,000 pieces of personal protection equipment. So good on you Adidas, that's some fantastic work. Everybody keeps saying, Ed, when does this shoe come out? Well, I think we can just wait for the moment, guys, because Nike have been concentrating on getting running shoes and footwear out to some of those key healthcare workers. So Nike have been helping out too by teaming up in the USA with a company called Good360, who are a non-profit organization, and other organizations of similar ilk over in Europe to get over 140,000 pairs of shoes out to key workers, those healthcare workers working on the front lines. They've got over 30,000 pairs of the Nike Air Zoom Pulse to hospitals in places like Chicago, Memphis, LA, and New York, and another 2,500 pairs of shoes to numerous places across Europe. 
I think they've been giving out bags of stuff as well, like socks, apparel, t-shirts and the like. So good stuff, Nike. Well done. Helping out the people that are the true heroes right now. It's time to head across to the Run Like Heller Weather Center. What's up everybody? This is Emily Heller coming to you from the Run Like Heller Weather Center. So Mother Nature has been a little harsh to us on the east coast of the United States, giving us some colder temperatures and some rainy days. I see you, Mother Nature. But fear not, because clearer skies are ahead. Warmer temperatures and sunny days are upon us, and that means it's time to lace up, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to get a sunny run in the books. Back to you, Ed. Thank you, Emily. It always seems like the weather starts off pretty poorly everywhere, and then later in the week, it's top notch. Heads. Ah! Story three is about the Jordan brand running shoes. You know I love my Jordan 5s. So Jordan Brand have announced the T-Runner Ultimate. I think that's what it's called. It's not the first Jordan Brand running shoe to be released over the last couple of years. This one though caught my eye due to the interesting use of the Zoom Air technology in the midsole. There's a full length Zoom Air unit as you would have got perhaps in the Pegasus 35 or 36, but they've doubled it up in the forefoot area. Not dissimilar to what we're seeing within the Pegasus 37 that's just been released. Sounding familiar to you? There's a really nice mesh upper on this one that again called out to me and said, you've seen me before. The upper shape really doesn't look too far from the Nike Zoomfly SP or the original version of the Vaporfly 4%. I think you'll agree. There's a full length rubber outsole with numerous protrusions. You know, I gotta get that word in somewhere. No fly wires here, but lace loop fastenings very similar to those on the Terrakiger 6 and the Pegasus 37 unknown foam though to me it does look like react although they've cut out a whole load of it so you can actually see the zoom air unit within the midsole you've got that kind of diamond structure throughout the midsole very interesting looking shoe some of the initial wear testers have said though that it's quite unstable i'm kind of looking at that shoe thinking there's some nods there to the zoom fly series but utilizing react foam throughout the midsole Although it does look incredibly squashy from what I've seen. Maybe there's some Zoom X in there. I mean, this is a premiumly priced shoe. I think it's about $150. So it's certainly a Jordan brand style price. Certainly looks like the silhouette of the Zoom Fly SP and the Vaporfly 4% original. Do comment below if you agree with me or disagree. I think this one launches around about the start of June for a quite ridiculous amount and it's probably not a running shoe I'm going to go for but interesting use of the technology nonetheless. Story 4 revolves around a fellow running teacher. As you guys know I'm a teacher of IT and computing or you may not have known that but you do now. I read a fantastic story about a teacher over in the USA, a chap called Bill McAllister. He hasn't seen his students since mid-March and I do feel for him. I understand how difficult that can be. Everybody's missing out on those proper social interactions right now, although we all understand why. So Bill decided to ditch the emails, the Zoom calls, the virtual learning environments, and he decided to get out and run so that he could give a wave to all of his students in the neighborhood. I think a wave and a smile, it just brightens up people's day. Though Bill did have to put a quite distinctive plan in place as only a couple of years before he'd had some quite extensive heart surgery. So he's been doing about six to eight miles a day on his path to go and see some of his students and just give them a wave and encourage them to continue their studies. I think he's been donating per mile to a specific charity. I'll try and place some information up towards that. I think it's Must Ministries, which I think is a American version of what we have here in the UK, the food banks. Obviously those are really important at the moment for those people who can't afford to get out and buy food for themselves, may have lost their jobs and things like that. So a really fantastic charity. If you can help out and donate to a similar charity in your area, I think it's a really fantastic thing to do. So a great cause and a really good reason to get out running, to help provide some of those small social interactions we're all missing. Well done, Bill. Okay, that's all the running news for this week. Hope you've enjoyed this episode and thanks for watching through to the end. Please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when new videos are launched. Comment below with any running news that you may have and give this video a thumbs up like. It helps to push us up the ratings. Stay safe, people. My name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.